This is the fourth video in a series of videos on graphing trigonometric functions. Um, in this video, we will look at horizontal stretching, compressing, and shifting, and also vertical stretching, compressing, and shifting. Okay? In essence, I'm stretching and compressing and shifting and moving these, gra these graphs around the xy coordinate plane. Okay. Now, let me warn you that this is where it begins to ver get very complicated for students. Okay. Now, so before we begin, I want to give you a rule of thumb that's been very helpful for me. Okay. If your graph is y equals something, then things inside the parentheses, okay, they affect something about the graph that's horizontal. Okay, things inside the parentheses make horizontal changes to our graphs. Okay, the other thing I want you to know about inside the parentheses is it doesn't follow your intuition. Okay, now before we get in, um, into what happens outside, let me show you some graphs of one that I think you'll be more familiar with. Um, and here's the graph now, kind of the, the dotted line is the graph y equals x, sorry, y equals x squared, okay? And I'm going to do horizontal changes to this affecting what is inside the parentheses. And I think I'm talking about these parentheses um, that I didn't write because they were um, kind of trivial for y equals x. So here is the graph. Now this graph is x plus 3, okay? So logically you might think it will go horizontally plus 3. Okay, but actually what happens is it goes to negative 3. Okay, so the graph of y equals x plus 3 squared actually shifted every point this way 3 units. Okay, so it's, it's a little opposite of your intuition. And the reason for that is that the number I would have to plug in here to get it to be the same as y equals x is a minus 3, not a positive 3, a minus 3. So I have to plug in opposite things to undo what I just did inside the parentheses. Okay, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, let me give you a different example. Um, if I do a minus 4, you probably will guess that instead of that my intuition says move to the left 4, minus 4. But actually what happens is it goes to the right 4. Okay? It, it does not follow your intuition. Okay? This is a shifting that's happening back and forth. So whenever you add or subtract a number inside the parentheses, it is a horizontal shift. Okay? Now, the same thing will happen with stretching and compressing. Okay? If I instead of put in here a 2x, okay, you might think that it's going to stretch it by a factor of 2. But in fact, the opposite happens. It's a horizontal change. Don't look at it vertically. Look at it horizontally. Okay? Vertically, this is the green graph is y equals 2x squared. So it's actually been compressed by a factor of 2. Okay? It's been compressed to be twice as skinny. Okay? And the same thing will happen if I look at, if I put in here instead, um, of a 0.5 or one half of x, um, it actually will become twice as wide. Okay, so things happen um, inside the parentheses. It's something horizontal, and it doesn't follow your intuition. Okay, now before I go actually to the outside, I want to actually take this um, this idea and pull it back all the way into trigonometric functions. So let me change this dotted one to sine of x and the green one to the sine of x plus pi. Um, let's actually do, let's just x plus 2, okay? So um, what happens is that the black, the, the dotted line is y equals sine of x, okay? And the green one I have graphed to be y equals the sine of x plus 2, okay? Um, no, that's not what I did. It is. Okay, so that means that I have taken this graph here and shifted it opposite of this, because inside the parentheses is opposite of what you would think. So this point has been shifted this way 
minus 2. And this point has been shifted this way. I'm sorry, not that point. This point has been shifted this way, minus 2. Okay? So a shift, um, that's what a shift would look like um, for the sine of x. Now, where it gets a little complicated um, is if I look at the sine of 2x, for example. Okay? Now, 2x, hopefully you realize now that it'll be a compression. Compression. It will kind of squeeze it together by a factor of 2. Okay? Now, so it's been kind of compressed, and so it's going much faster in the horizontal direction. Okay? Now, this brings up some terminology that we need to be aware of. Okay? And the terminology is the idea of a period. Okay? The period is how frequently the graph repeats itself. Okay? Most graphs, at least sine and cosine, um, those graphs typically have a period of 2 pi. It's, it's very common, okay? because we've gone all the way around the unit circle, and that has a period of 2 pi. Okay? Now, but when I compress it by a factor of 2, I've actually also compressed the period. So now it's going through the entire sine curve in half the time, or the new period of the green one. So the green has a period of 2 pi divided by 2, which gives me a period of pi, which means every pi, it'll go through a full cycle. Okay? If instead, I want to leave that there. If instead I look at it's the sign of 0.5x, then it'll be twice as wide. Okay? In this case, Erase this right here. In this case, the period is 2 pi divided by 0.5, and that would be 4 pi, which means it would take 4 pi for it to go through a full cycle. Okay. Now you can think about if I have um, the sine of some number, I'll call it b x, then the the period, which sometimes is called t, at least it was when I was in pre-calculus, um, the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b. Okay? Um, that's a formula that will give you the period um, when you have some coefficient of x inside the parentheses. Again, inside are things horizontal. Okay? I think we're now ready to go on to look at things that are outside of the parentheses. Okay? It could be in front. Okay, which usually that's where the stretching and compressing happen outside. Or it could be at the end, and that's where shifting happens. Okay, but things on the outside, I'll write over here, things on the outside are things vertical. Okay, and this does follow your intuition. That's a D. D O. Okay, and I'm gonna gonna pull this back just like we did before to the um, to y equals x squared. Okay, and instead of doing um, x squared, I'm going to look at doing two x squared. Now, um, this follows the intuition, um, even though it looks just like we looked at before as far as a, com a horizontal comp compression, things outside of the parentheses are things that happen vertically. So this has actually been kind of stretched vertically by a factor of 2. Okay? Um, if we look at um, 0.5 x squared, it's been compressed vertically, it's gone down by a factor of 0.5. So I've been multiplying every y value by 0.5. It's been kind of compressed vertically down uh, by a factor of 1 half. Okay? A similar thing will happen if I'm shifting it, meaning I'm doing minus, let's just do plus 3. It'll be shifted up 3. If I do minus, I'm sorry, x squared minus 2, it'll go down 2, okay? So things outside of the parentheses, outside the parentheses, it's something that's vertical, 
and it follows your intuition. Let me pull this all the way back, in, back into the sine of x. Okay, now if I do 2 sine of x, okay, it's been stretched vertically by a factor of 2. Let me move this up a little bit so we can see it. Okay, now it's been stretched by a factor of 2, so it'll have the same period, okay, it'll go through the same cycle in 2 pi, but now it is twice as tall, okay, and that gives us the rise to a, a, an important concept called the amplitude. which I think I just misspelled. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, the amplitude is how um, the horizontal distance, sorry, the vertical distance between the middle of the graph and the peaks is how I'll kind of define it. Okay, so the middle of the graph I'm thinking right here is the middle of the graph. Okay, and up here will be where the peaks are. Okay, so this graph right here, the green one, has an amplitude of two. Okay, whereas our typical, our normal sine of x um, graph has an amplitude of 1. Okay, now a similar thing will happen if instead of doing 2 sine of x, let me kind of delete that, I do 0.5 sine of x, it'll be compressed vertically by a factor of 2, and now my amplitude, instead of being 1, um, the amplitude will now be right here at 0.5, okay? So the amplitude is kind of how much vertical stretching is happening with the graph, okay? Um, so this video really was kind of overviewing um, the idea of horizontal and vertical stretching, compressing, and shifting. Um, and in the next video, I'll do some more example problems of this with sine, cosine, tangent, um, some of our other trig functions. So I hope this was informative to you, start some, laying down some basic ground rules of how to think about um, stretching and shifting and things that will happen um, horizontally and vertically with trigonometric functions. So thank you so much for watching.